Today, we're gonna talk about the bare minimum skills you need in order to be a new data scientist. But first, what does a data scientist actually do? So if you're watching, you probably already know, it's basically the turn data into insights, whatever that means to you. Primarily, you'll be extracting, cleaning, analyzing data, identifying patterns, building models, and visualizing results. So let's talk about all the skills you need in order to do your job. For skill, data cleaning also known as data cleansing or data scrubbing, but basically it's the process of identifying, correcting, or removing errors in your data sets. So why is this actually even important? Well, garbage in, garbage out. So here are a few things that you're gonna need to know how to fix. Missing records, duplicate records, inconsistent formats like this date format to this date format, incorrect values, like if there's a negative number, uh, for someone's age, for example, or random white spaces messing up your data types, you're gonna need to know how to fix all of that. So now your next question might be, what tools can I use to clean this data? Well, the number one tool that every data scientist should know is how to use SQL to clean your data. That's step number one. Step number two might be to use Python to further clean your data. Here are some libraries you'll need to know. The first library, Pandas. It's obviously the most popular library for data manipulation and analysis, but you can use it to also clean your data. NumPy is another library to use. You're probably already using it if you use Pandas, Pandas is basically built on NumPy. Fuzzy Wuzzy, this is a library used for string matching and can be very useful in data cleaning for categorical data. Daytime is another library to use. It's a built-in Python module for manipulating dates and times. So now that your data is cleaned, what's the next step? Data exploration. This is where you start to understand what your data looks like and then look for insights. So what are some things to look for when you're exploring data? Descriptive statistics. Start by looking at some of the basic stats of your data, such as mean, median, mode, range, standard deviation, variance. This just gives you a general understanding of how your data is distributed. Is your data normally distributed? Is it skewed left or right? Understanding how your data is distributed can help you decide what statistical methods you can use. You should also be looking out for outliers. I would look out for missing values, correlations in your data. So what are the relationships between different variables and columns? Do they move together? Do they move independently? And lastly, visualizations. You can use visual tools like histograms, scatter plots, bot plots to really understand what your data looks like and reveal insights that are not immediately obvious in raw data. And again, you can use Python to help you with exploring your data sets. You can use Pandas, you can use SciPy, which is a library for scientific and technical computing. It provides functions for advanced math, signal processing, optimization, stats, and a lot more. Scikit-learn is another library you can use. It's a machine learning library, but it also provides several useful functions for data processing, such as normalization, scaling, and handling missing values. In terms of data visualizations, you can use libraries like matplotlib and Seaborn. These are the standard Python plotting library. And if you want to specifically visualize missing data, you can use a library called missing no. All right, so now that you've cleaned your data and explored it, you probably will now want to visualize the data so you can reveal trends and patterns and communicate those to your stakeholders. In terms of tools to visualize your data, most data scientists like to use tools like Power BI, Tableau, or Python to make some pretty graphs. Here are some Python libraries you can learn for data visualization. We've talked about matplotlib and Seaborn, these are basically the two most popular standard Python libraries for visualization, but there's also Plotly if you need interactive graphs. The graphs are web-based and can be embedded in web application. Another alternative is called Bokeh. It's very similar to Plotly and it's used to create complex interactive visualization. And lastly, if you're an R lover, you can use ggplot. It's basically the same R library, but ported to Python. So pick one of those Python libraries, visualize all your data, and if you have something to share, I would recommend sharing your graphs on a subreddit called Data is Beautiful. The next skill is your ability to uncover hidden patterns and relationships with the data. You're going to need to use statistical methods in order to do that. 
here are some statistical frameworks you're gonna need to know. The simplest one is descriptive statistics. So we already covered this. It means mean, median mode, standard deviation, but it also means your ability to understand the dispersion in your data and how your data is distributed. Inferential statistics. This involves making inferences about a population based off of sample data. It's basically what hypothesis testing is, confidence intervals, and t-tests to make generalizations and predictions of your data. Regressions. This is basically to understand the relationship between the features in your data set. It's commonly used for forecasting. Multivariate analyses. This is a much more difficult technique compared to the others. This includes multiple regressions, multivariate analysis of variants like MANOVAs, and principal component analyses or PCA. Sounds intense? It kinda is, but don't worry, just use these Python libraries to do your work. We've talked about SciPy and Scikit-Learn, those are two libraries you can use. And the third one is called Stats Models. All three of them are basically the same. They cover very similar tests, very similar methodologies. So you can just pick one in order to do your work. Now let's get to the holy grail of being a data scientist, building machine learning models. So what are some of the models that I need to know? Here are a few that I would recommend. Linear regression, logistic regressions, decision trees, random forests, support vector machines, naive bays, K nearest neighbors, neural networks, gradient boosting algorithms like XGBoost, and deep learning models that can be used for image and speech recognition, like CNNs and RNN. That probably sounds like you need a PhD in math in order to be a data scientist. Well, again, you don't need to know anything. You just need to know the right Python libraries to use. Machine learning is just like stats. You need to know how to use SciPy, stats models, or scikit-learn in order to build your machine learning model. If you want some examples, check out the data project section on our Stratascratch platform. So I've explained basically five technical skills you need to know to be a data scientist. The final skill is a non-technical skill. It's communication and stakeholder management. As a data scientist, the softer skills can define you. You're gonna need to be able to talk to your stakeholders and dumb things down for them. Here are some communication skills you'll need to get a handle of. Number one, data storytelling, visual communication, business acumen, and project management. Basically, as a data scientist, you're going to need to know how to tell a compelling story with the data you have. So that's basically it. That's about six skills to learn as a data scientist and 14 Python libraries. If you want any examples of data projects, please go to the data projects section on the Strata Scratch platform. And if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.